Hello everybody, welcome back to Ray's World. If you've ever panned out gold and you've been confused about what's in your pan, today's video is for you. Today we're going to be doing a little test. Very commonly you will find something like pyrite in your gold pan. What is pyrite everybody? Everybody, it is fool's gold. The old timers called it fool's gold because it was commonly, it, it looks like gold. People used to think it was gold. And if you had a gold nugget this size, you'd be like, woo, I'm rich. Um, just not the case. So we're gonna do a video today on how to tell the difference between gold and fool's gold. One important thing about distinguishing gold from fool's gold is knowing its composition. Now gold is a native element. That means that it's on the periodic table of elements and it only has one type of atom in it. Um, fool's gold is an iron sulfite. So what's really, really cool is that if you went to an outcrop of rock and you thought you found gold, but you see a rust streak coming off of it, that means it looks like it's dripping rust. Guess what guys, that is pyrite. One of the other ways that you can tell the difference between gold and fool's gold, if you look at a piece of fool's gold, it's got sharp edges. Look at all those sharp edges in the crystal. I mean, this is a really big piece right here, but there's a lot of sharp edges there. Gold is generally rounded and smooth. It doesn't have that same um, uh, sharpness to it. If you were to take a knife and try to cut a piece of this off, right here, this, this fool's gold, if you were to just try to slice this a little bit off, it would fracture, it would actually break. You wouldn't get a nice little smooth line. If you've got a big enough piece of gold, you can actually scratch and take a piece right off and you'll come off with a nice little line. That's because it's more malleable. Gold is more malleable than fool's gold. You can also take a hammer. If you hit this with a hammer, you're just gonna break it into little pieces. If you take a piece of gold, hit it with a hammer, it's just going to flatten out, okay? So it's a lot more malleable than fool's gold is. Let's say you're out in the field and you think you have fool's gold and you've got a magnet and you wanna test and see if it's magnetic. Well, guess what? It's not. It's an iron sulfide, but there's not enough um, iron in there to really make it magnetic. So a magnet is not going to be one of your good tests. Another thing you can do, I, I realize this is a really big piece, so it's kind of easy to tell, but uh, you can do what's called a scratch test. Come on down here and take a look at a scratch test. So here I've got a small piece of gold. Actually, I've got a really nice, really nice piece of gold. And I've got a piece of copper. Because of something called the Mohs hardness scale, pyrite will scratch copper, but gold will not scratch copper. I'm gonna throw a graphic on the screen real quick to show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, um, anything with a higher number, like they say diamonds are really hard, uh, it, it means diamonds are less likely to get scratched. Diamonds are not going to get scratched as easily as something like talc is, all right? So copper has a hardness somewhere around three. We're gonna take this piece of gold and we're just gonna go right here on the side of this stand, or this Walking Liberty copper round. And you can see some scratches appeared. So we got very few scratches, but they're not very deep. They're not very defined. So that tells me that the hardness of this gold is right around the hardness of this copper. And in fact, if I rub it a few times, check this out. Those scratches are gone. So that was actually the copper scratching the gold, not the uh, gold scratching the copper. Watch what happens when I take this little piece of pyrite. I know, I'm gonna ruin it. This is called a destructive test. It's, there are other tests you can do that are non-destructive, and I'll talk about that one um, here in just a minute, but this is a, called a destructive test because it destroys stuff. So very, very easily, look at that. I've now ruined this copper round. That's okay, it's a round. See that? Those are permanent scratches from the piece of pyrite. Pyrite scratches copper, gold does not scratch copper. Mohs hardness, everybody, practical application of geology. A non-destructive test to see 
if you've got gold or if you've got pyrite is to use specific gravity. When we're panning out gold, we stratify that pan, we shake it until it can't be shook anymore, and that's to get all of the heavies to go to the bottom. It's to get all of those rocks and, and crystals and gold that's in your pan that has a higher specific gravity to sink to the bottom. When you're stratifying something, everything that has a low specific gravity, gravity stays at the top, Everything with a high specific gravity stays at the bottom. And specific gravity is measured in grams per cubic centimeter. Um, that is its, uh, its uh, volume, grams per cubic centimeter, length, width, height, uh, divided by its mass. Now something like this, you can't really measure its length, its width, and its height. It's irregular. There's some other weight tests you can do. There's a lot of good channels that, that go out there and you can, you can get the volume of this. Same thing with this little bitty piece of gold. Um, you know, it's, it's heavier per unit volume. So if you had an equal amount, an equal amount, if you had, say, one cubic centimeter of each of this, the gold and the pyrite, the gold would actually be heavier. It would feel heavier than the pyrite would because of its high specific gravity. Um, Pyrite has a specific gravity right around five grams per cubic centimeter, and um, gold has a specific gravity right around 19. Depends upon the purity, but right around 19 grams per cubic centimeter. So that means if you had an equal amount, if you had one centimeter of gold versus one centimeter of pyrite, this one would be about five grams, this one would be about 19 grams. One last way that you can tell the difference between pyrite and gold is called the streak test. In a streak test, you need an unglazed piece of porcelain. That's what this is. This is called a streak plate, and you can see it's been used. But it is an unglazed piece of porcelain. Gold, this is a destructive test, gold will streak yellow. And all I'm doing is I'm powderizing it. And yes, I'm kind of destroying that nugget, but again, it's a demonstrative test or a destructive test. And so that kind of has a a grayish yellow streak and then if we do the pyrite look at that that's really really dark gray so a big difference this is kind of yellow and golden color you can kind of see it on the tip of my finger too see all that yellow gold right there so this is the gold, this is the pyrite. The pyrite may also streak red or brown depending upon the uh, purity or if there was any acid in there. Um, but um, definitely have gold, this is pyrite. Uh, streak test is used on a lot of minerals to determine what they are. Um, there's some out there that look uh, like hematite. Hematite looks typically black. It streaks bright red, like this color red on a streak plate. So if you have a piece of hematite, which I do not have, um, it will look red on the street plate. So there you go. There are some of the ways that you can tell the difference between pyrite and real gold or fool's gold and real gold. Hopefully when you're in an area and you're panning for gold, um, if you're panning correctly and you're stratifying correctly, all of that pyrite, because of its specific gravity, is just going to be washed out of your pan and you won't have any in there. Speaking of things in your pan that might confuse you, you might find a piece of biotite mica. This is a rather large sheet. It came off of a sheet that's about this big. Uh, but biotite mica, when it's really small, or any other type of mica, when it's really small, you'll see little flashes and glints and glitters in the pan. Uh, but again, that's just the mica. That's not the gold. If you're panning it correctly and you're stratifying your gold, your gold pan correctly, you're going to have all of this be at the top and you're going to wash that right off. So you should only be left with those black sands and the gold. I hope this video was informational. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or uh, want to share any other information, tips and tricks on how you tell the difference between gold and other things in your pan, throw a comment down below. I'd really love to read them. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.